Meow. 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 This is actually being recorded in reverse order, by the way. Good kitten internet. I had actually just finished recording the video that you're about to see. It's actually why it's over there. Um, but I need the cute boo kitty part first. Right, boo kitty? Boo kitty, there you are. Oh, How are you so cute? Oh, it's because of your diet? And I should feed you more? Mm-hmm. Likely story. Meow. Meow. Good kitten again, Internet. And I am back for another one of these videos. So on the first video, I covered basically where I grew up. I did not, however, cover places that I had traveled, and I realized it after I finished recording last time, because I'm really bad at planning these things. So, um, first off, where I've traveled as a kid, or not adult, so obviously I visited the university that I attended. Um, oddly enough, that was the only university I ended up visiting. I had plans on visiting University of Central Florida and University of South Florida, but never did. Um, so for like vacations or trips or anything like that, I basically had very little as a kid, probably because I was damn poor. I mean, po, really po. Um, let's see, I, when I was living up in New Hampshire, my grandparents would occasionally pay for a flight down so I can see them. Uh, beyond that, there's only two real places that I visited. I mean, outside of Orlando for, or Kissimmee, I should say, for Disney World. That barely counts when you live in South Florida. Um, the first of the places is up here. So, I have family all over the place. Um, yeah, that's the easiest way to phrase it. Oh, everywhere in the South, I have family. Uh, extended family, for the most part. And... My family reunion from, well, technically I did go to family reunion while it was in Georgia. That would be in Tifton, Georgia. So, Tifton, Georgia. This is Tifton. Um, it's not really within my memory, though. This is actually where most of my father's side of the family lived or grew up. You know, over there. Um, and most of the family at this point lives kind of in this general region. But while I was, within my memory, I should say, Family Reunion was actually in South Carolina. Specifically, I'm trying to find where. It's been a long time since I was at Family Reunion. I would spot the place. So I know that they actually had Family Reunion at Hilton Head at a couple of points, but... That's not where I remember it at. I remember it in... Oh, where is that? Darn it. My memory's failing. The sad thing is, I could probably tell you directions to get there, which is what I'm trying to picture in my mind. But I'm not seeing it now. Oh, well, anyway. It's generally in this region is where my family union's at. Um... Somewhere around between Greenville and Columbia, South Carolina. Uh, it was a family member's home. And basically, I went there one time when I would have been, I think it was like 12, 11, somewhere in that area. And oh, I don't need that anymore. Um, gone there once, visited. I had a blast, actually. I really enjoyed my extended family because they're a lot more like me than my direct family. And then I went up there again a few years later, three years later, and I gave the directions there. Mind you, this is prior to GPS usage. This is prior to everything. I had been there once, and I actually remembered the entire route there. That's kind of the way my brain works when it comes to locations. It's kind of like my brain has Google Maps, but prior to Google Maps existence. Anyway, so that was one trip, or a pair of trips, and then the other trip was to over here, where um, in middle school, I reached 
a level of national competition for something called Academic Games. And Academic Games for that year was in Baton Rouge. So we, um, there was a, and as a part, result of that trip, we were to take a bus that goes from our various areas of South Florida, um, specifically our county that went, um, various schools in South Florida, all the way up to Baton Rouge, along with uh, stop in New Orleans during the competition. And so, as I mentioned, I was poor, and there was a fairly large fee for going. Um, they said that they gave me a scholarship. I think what actually happened is that one of the teachers paid for it, just out of her pocket. Um, because I definitely could not afford the, I think it was like 150 or $200 to go. Which would have been a horrible shame because I really enjoyed that trip. And I put a lot of positive impressions on people while I was there. So it was in a Hilton in Baton Rouge. I wouldn't be able to tell you where because I was not paying attention. I fell asleep during the trip. And we ended up visiting the French Quarter down in New Orleans. Um, I'm still friends with uh, multiple of the people that I went with. I don't think any of them's watching. If so, hi. Um, that was a lot of fun. I didn't do well at national competition, but it was a lot of fun. I took home some trophies. I do have the trophies downstairs still. Maybe I'll have that be a vlog one day. The random trophies that I have from childhood. Anyway, those were the only two trips that I ever took as a kid. Um, not counting visiting Angola, where I went to school at when I had chosen my college. Um... I don't know if I've actually talked about the story about that, but I chose quite a bit later than most people, apparently. I went up during my spring break, which I thought was typical, but apparently in Indiana, their spring break was a lot earlier, and thus it wasn't typical for somebody to choose that late. So there was nobody on campus or anything like that, and it, it was summer session for them. And I had visited campus. It was pouring rain. It was cold outside. The two people who were giving me a tour were so concerned that I would just hate the campus. I fell in love with it. And the reason why I fell in love with it is if I zoom out a bit, you can see that this is a very sparsely populated area. I mean, I think the population of Angola is only like, what, 3,000? What's Google say? Um, oh, it's 8,000. But population's gone up quite a bit since I was there. Um, yeah. It's a small town, and it feels like a small town. And keep in mind, the last time I had lived in a small town like Angola when I was living in New Hampshire in Allenstown, where Allenstown's population is tiny. We'll just go with tiny. What's Google say? Yeah, 4,322 right now. So say it's roughly half the size of Angola. So I fell in love with that place, and... While I kind of wish I would have gone to a different university a lot of the time, mostly because I did not get as high of a quality of it, high quality of as an education as I could have, the non-computer, so I went to school for, um, initially for computer science, and my computer science education was, shall we say, garbage. Um, I basically didn't learn much for the computer science parts. What I did learn was lots of humanities. I learned lots of the quote unquote soft skills, and that's probably way more valuable in my mind. But as a result, my computer science skills suffered by going to Tri-State, now trying. Anyway, so fast forward a bit, and um, it would have been 2003 is when my partner visited me for the first time. I was still living in Allwood, which is right here which is a guys only, was at the time a guys-only dorm. Um, prior to me arriving there, it was a co-ed dorm, and after me leaving, it became a women's dorm. But anyway, um, I not really snuck my partner in, but basically people in charge sort of knew that I had my partner there, and we did this over Thanksgiving break. And that was really nice, and my partner wanted me to go visit them. Up. So I did. Um, over the summer, that would have been summer of 2004. So each summer I was traveling from Trine or Tri-State at the time, all the way back to West Palm Beach again, all right, zoom out enough, all the way back from West Palm Beach. And then over the summer, 
for a couple of weeks, I went from West Palm Beach for my first trip internationally to, at the time, Oslo, Norway. It's the first time I had ever left the country, and I, yeah, to be quite honest, it was probably not the safest of plans. I trusted my partner, obviously, but I had only traveled by myself a handful of times at that point. Admittedly, by the time going to college back and forth, I was used to it, but outside of my first trip to college, I always knew somebody in college there. I knew that there were people waiting for me that, you know, I would interact with. In this case, I knew one person, and that was my partner, and I didn't share a language with anybody else there. So that was scary as hell. Um, I still have pictures up from my trip. I had a blast. I really enjoyed it. We actually went to a college campus. I'm trying to see if I can spot it. I probably could. Um, yeah, it's up here. That's the hospital. But anyway, um, this was the region that my partner lived in. Yeah, I can actually sort of remember all of the areas here. My partner doesn't live there anymore. But um, yeah, we ended up touring downtown. Um, we ended up seeing a full third of the Canadian submarine fleet. They happened to have had one sub docked in Oslo at the time. And yeah, it was a blast. I really enjoyed it. And it formulated a lot of what I want to do when it comes to traveling. And basically, that's the barrier in my mind between my childhood and my adult years. I met, I met my partner in person when I was 20 years old. And so I consider everything prior to when I was 20 my childhood, even though that includes a couple of years of college, and everything 20 and beyond as my adulthood, because that's when I started doing things on my own. I wasn't really under the shadow of my parents once I went to college, and while I never was really restricted in what freedoms I can do, traveling on my own was brand new. I, that was not a thing that, I mean, my mother still has never left the country and hasn't really traveled all that much outside of with family. Um, my father left the country, but that was because he was in the Navy. That was the only reason why he had left the country. So this was very different from what my parents had done. Uh, my grandparents actually did travel around the world, but that was for another reason. Anyway, um, so visited Oslo, went back. Um, technically, I had a layover in London. Um, I spent a, basically a night in Heathrow. And then arrived back, went back to school, and then that would have been 2004 to 2005. 2005, I had entered and was accepted into an honors seminar and about this point in college i started i had finished up all of my required classes basically um by that point i had declared my second degree of mathematics and i was needing to intentionally not graduate so i wouldn't lose student aid so i swapped my schedules around where i still had one required class remaining on my last year and I went for five years for reference. I figured five years for two four-year degrees was not a bad plan. Um, and at this point, I already knew I was going to do that. So I had intentionally kept one class to myself that was a required class for computer science. Beyond that, my two senior years, I didn't really take required classes to speak of. I took the rest of my math classes in my first semester of the first senior year. And uh, that's about it. Everything else, my requirements for my double degree were... I needed to take 30 credit hours above and beyond my first degree. So the way I ended up doing that was phrasing my mathematics degree as my first degree. And 30 credit hours above that meant that I had to take uh, what effectively meant the minimum amount of credits for the rest of the year. So I just started having fun with my classes. And one of the classes that I took was an honors seminar. It was a one credit hour class that... Um, the class was Castles, Cathedrals, and Culture. The class was based out of Austria. So this was my spring semester. Once we reached spring break time, after a very short crash course in German, we flew, technically, we actually flew, well, let's say we were living in Angola. We flew out of Detroit. We flew from Detroit, which was 
first time I had flown out of Detroit or really visited, um, technically the airport's not in Detroit. The airport is in Romulus, which is why I'm, there it is. Yep, Romulus. And you can see the airport right next to it. Pretty much the only thing in Romulus is the airport. Anyway, um, we flew out of the airport all the way out we had a layover in was our layover in berlin or a layover in amsterdam i think it was in berlin um layover in berlin and then flew to vienna where we stayed for a week that was my spring break was in vienna once more had a blast i really actually enjoy traveling to places i've never been and there were a couple of people with us that actually spoke german so that helped um, the biggest downside with Vienna, and it's actually still a problem today, is that Austria is full of smokers. Uh, it has one of the highest smoking rates in Europe, and they were one of the last places to stop smoking indoors. When I visited, which was in 2005, they had not stopped yet. There was even smoking indoors in the hotel that we were staying at. I hated that. Um, the hotel was nicely positioned, at least. It was right dead center of the area. Uh, I don't think I'd be able to give you directions here anymore. I remember going to certain places, especially here. I have a lot of beautiful photos of this church. Um, I have a lot of beautiful photos from Austria in general. And yeah, I spent a lot of time in Austria. That was about a week. In my mind, that was a lot of time. And then flew back. So that was my second European trip. Uh, my third and subsequent European trips were all to Norway, basically. Um, yeah. So from there, I was living in Angola. I had had a job after graduation, and I left the job because I couldn't deal with it anymore. It was driving me completely batty. Um, that's a nice way of putting it. More like I was starting to have... Um, physical ailments due to the amount of stress I was putting myself under because I hated it that much. Uh, the job's right here. It's called Vestal. And while some of it was definitely the organization itself, like how they screwed me out of health insurance, um, most of it was my direct supervisor who was an idiot. Anyway, um, Vestal was also not exactly a short walk from where I lived. I lived over here, Village Green, yeah. So these were the apartments I lived in. I actually kind of like those apartments outside of the weird issues in summer. But I lived in this one? Yeah, I believe it was this one. So I didn't live next to the office, and I'm pretty sure it was facing this direction. So I lived in this apartment here. Um, this was not exactly a short walk. Let's see. Do, 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 do. So yeah, it was about like mile and a half roughly um i mean that's fine during like fall and it was okay during summer it wasn't great uh, i would end up arriving at work very sweaty so i would usually leave for work as early as i could make it just so it would be cooler in the day but when winter started approaching that was going to stink a bunch and there are no sidewalks here for reference um it's just road uh, today, there's actually sidewalks up to, uh, that's what, fire? Yeah, that did not exist back then. All of the sidewalk is actually new. I remember right. Yeah, there's not even sidewalk at Walmart. So yeah, I was just walking alongside of the road every morning. Um, sometimes I would get a ride with my roommate at the time. My roommate actually worked for the university. But anyway, I left there um, after almost a year. I ran out of my savings because I couldn't find another job. I had a trip out to Norway during this time. I didn't pay for the trip. My partner paid for it. So once more, visiting Norway. Um, this time, I had actually visited where my partner lived and also visited the city of Bergen. I'm not going to point out where my partner lives, but it's in the middle of nowhere up here, basically. Just think of it that way. Um, but I visited Bergen for the first time, and I like the city. Um, it's easy to get around. It's easy to spot where you need to go. Everything's within walking distance. Um, the central area is where the buses are. And yeah, I've been to Bergen quite a bit now. Um, more than Oslo now, now that I think about it. Anyway, back to the US. So, um, I had been living with 
a friend. Um, they took me in, which was extremely nice of them. I didn't pay rent. I was effectively homeless um, because I didn't have any money. But the university happened to have hired me right after I'd moved. Uh, they lived over here. Um, this part of the university didn't exist at the time. That started construction after I left. But this part did. And this is actually where I worked. Specifically, here. I worked in the uh, student center in what I can only describe as kind of like the storefront of a mall, where you have a glass front to a kind of enclosed area inside of a mall. Only the enclosed area was a couple of cubes, and it was our tech help desk. So I worked as a tech support person, even though I was a Windows surf or I was a server administrator, not necessarily of Windows, but turned out to be DBA in Windows. Um, even though I was in sysadmin, I worked as technical support there because that was the position open. I worked there for a few months before I was basically laid off for political reasons, for lack of a better way of phrasing it. Um, not anything that I did, as in political conflict between supervisors of mine, and I was caught in the middle. But I met several friends while I was working there. I was still involved with theater, which was nice. And after I had left, after several months, I started applying for graduate schools, which I did visit the one that I was accepted to. So I'd applied to graduate schools um, generally in, we'll go with this area. Um, I was trying to avoid the South. Uh, and Technically, I actually never went further South than Washington, D.C. where I was applying. Uh, mostly in the Indiana, Illinois, Ohio area and Michigan. Uh, but also, like, for instance, I applied at Cornell. Oddly enough, I was actually accepted in Cornell with the stipulation that they couldn't... It was... They would have accepted me if it weren't for the fact that I had required on my sheet, that, or my application, that I needed financial aid. And, of course, I needed financial aid. I was unemployed. I had basically spent what was pretty close to my last dollars on the application fees for graduate school. But I was accepted in the University of Toledo. Um, it, that was actually a mistake. I was not meant to be accepted in the University of Toledo. Because, once more, I'd put on my application, I required financial aid, I required a tuition stipend and everything. And that apparently got lost. They didn't grant me any of that for their Master's of Computer Science program. But, remember how I mentioned that I actually have two degrees? While I was touring the University of Toledo, which the University of Toledo is over here, yeah. Uh, while I was touring... I actually ended up talking with the mathematics department and got accepted while I was physically there. Um, or I, I was, I was accepted before I was in phone conversations with them for a master's of applied mathematics. So I was accepted and that was great. That's what my plan was going to be until my friend asked, you know, if I had applied to his job. He works where I work today. So I was about to go to graduate school, and I basically had the choice of whether I wanted to go to graduate school where I was going to receive a $2,000 a year stipend, or $2,000 a semester stipend. Sorry, not quite that bad, but close enough, which would barely have paid for food, and that's about it. Um, I would have needed to have taken a slightly additionally large student loan, but nothing major like what I had from Tri-State which I'm still paying off my student loan, even though I graduated uh, 13 years ago. Yeah, 13 years ago. Still paying it off. I have a 30-year student loan. But instead, I moved here. Madison area. This is where I work. Um, by the way, if you're wondering, I'm not actually trying to not say where I work in fully intentionally. I want to make sure that it's very obvious that my employer doesn't sponsor or put their words behind my videos, since I'm not technically charging for my videos because there's no advertisements or anything like that. I want to make sure that it's very clear what I'm doing. So yeah, um, I moved from, I, I had decided that yes, getting paid is probably a good idea. My housemate just returned. Um, getting paid is probably a good idea, so I moved from Angola with a caravan of friends along 
8090. One of the longer road trips I had taken as an adult. Um, up through Chicago, up through to where I live now, which is Madison. I've moved around a little bit in Madison, but in general, same general area on the western side of Madison. Um, let's see, what else? Uh, more travel. So, I have taken a few other trips at this point. I'm trying to do this in chronological order. It's not easy for me to do. Oh, I forgot. I had actually visited Ann Arbor, Michigan as well, for University of Michigan. Didn't mention that. That's not exactly that far away from Angola, which is back here. Um, what else? I've taken some trips down to southern Indiana. Southern Indiana is quite beautiful in my mind. Um, I've had a couple of friends get married down here in French Lick. And yes, the name is very silly. But it's an absolutely breathtakingly beautiful area. There's elevation. I mean, Indiana's northern Indiana is rather flat. You can tell that there's elevation at this part. But when you get further north, and I've also was in Brown County, when you get further north, everything's flat. It's all farmland until you actually get to Angola, oddly enough. Um, really, this county probably should not have been a part of Indiana. Everything else matches. Anyway, um, other places that I've visited during that time. I went to Indianapolis for Gen Con one year. Um, trying to think before I get to the Madison era, where else I've visited. That's really about it, actually. So, living in Madison. Uh, so, I've lived here for a few months shy of 11 years now. So, I have visited... See, in Wisconsin itself, I was at the Dells a year ago. I'm not a huge fan, but then again, I'm not much for water parks, and it was blisteringly hot with lots and lots of mosquitoes everywhere, even though it was only Memorial Day weekend. Um, went up to the UP, so the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. This area is beautiful, by the way. Over in Ontonagon, um, that was a June or July-ish time. We had a cabin, and I can point out the cabin. Yep, right here. This is where our cabin was. As in, it was a house directly on the lake. It's Lake Superior, right? My brain's not completely dead. Yeah, Lake Superior. So, it was a cabin directly on Lake Superior. This was beautiful. I enjoyed it so much. The insects were the only major problem. Um, the place that we had rented from Airbnb was freaking huge and is actually cheaper than my current house, which that's because my house, uh, Madison's in a high cost of living area. Um, got to take some decently nice nighttime photography because there's a giant lake in front of you, so there's no light pollution to speak of in that direction. Fortunately, the weather didn't comply too much, but the closest light pollution was down over in like Grand Marais or Thunder Bay which was far enough away where it didn't really affect us. Um, so that would be about it for Wisconsin travel. I had a friend that lived in Minneapolis, so I went to go visit him a couple of times. So Madison to Minneapolis, that's a decently long trip. And then one year for, once more Memorial Day, we ended up going up to the Grand Marais area. Specifically, we actually had stayed in Lutzen, but Grand Marais was the closest city. So, in Lutzen, I think if I zoom in enough, I'll see my place. Maybe not. Yeah, there we go. We're getting closer. That's not quite where I was looking for. I believe it's one of these areas. I'm trying to remember. Yeah, that's too far. Anyway, um, we stayed once more at a cabin on the beach. Um, this one wasn't quite as good in my mind. It was still nice, don't get me wrong, and I love the area. Um, I really like, well, effectively, this region. Um, I would love to live here, except that, uh, well, I wouldn't be able to get a job. Not to mention, there's no real public transportation up there, and I kind of rely on that. Anyway, um... So yeah, did a couple of trips there, and 
went, I've done some trips in the Northern Illinois area, especially whenever I visit friends back in this area. And yeah, so now for the longer term trip, uh, longer trips, work trips specifically, or work related, I should say. So um, one of the perks of my job is that I get a mostly paid sabbatical to a country I've never visited. So you can take this as either four weeks in a country every five years, or you can take it as two two week sabbaticals with a year and a half gap in between. And for my after my five years at my current employer, I had chosen the two two week sabbaticals. So the first one that I had taken was to Sweden. So ended up landing in Stockholm, traveling from Stockholm out to Not this one, the very similarly spelled one that's not Linkoping. Let's do Chopping. Oh, this is embarrassing. I can't find it. It's a much smaller town, but I enjoyed it. Anyway, um, we basically toured a good chunk of the more populated parts of Sweden. I... The first part of the trip was very nice. I didn't really like the second part of the trip. By this point, my brain had started having some major issues with depression and so on. And there was a lot of challenging times. Um, the major city that we ended up toward the end of the trip was Malmö. And I actually really like the city. I want to go back. Um, this is just on the opposite side of the very famous bridge from Copenhagen. And... The only place that I went here was the airport, unfortunately. So that barely even counts. But yeah, a trip to Sweden, which was definitely a place I had never visited before. Also very convenient for my partner, given that my partner lives in Norway. So that was nice. And for my second sabbatical, we went here. So the first part of the sabbatical, we were in St. John's, as in Nova Scotia. I have friends that live in St. John's, so visited them. That was awesome. Got to tour things over here. It was really nice. I I enjoy Canada. It feels more like my type of place. And also, I can actually speak the language. It's the first time I had visited a foreign country that I actually understood the primary language of. Um, the second place that I visited would have been Halifax. Um, we stayed in Halifax for a week and up in St. John's for a week. It's myself and my partner. And I generally enjoyed the trip. We had a lot of hassles trying to get back from Halifax, and that kind of um, tainted the trip a bit. The other part tainting the trip being that my partner was sick for a good chunk of the time, unfortunately. Uh, so yeah, visited that. So I have actually been to Canada, although only the parts of Canada that are islands sort of. I mean, Nova Scotia's kind of still attached. But anyway, um, so yeah, that was my first sabbatical. My second sabbatical is actually going to be in a month from now, or month and a half from now, June, and I will be going to the Republic of Ireland. So I'll have more information about that later. However, I've actually gone to a couple of other places while uh, for work purposes. Um, the first place, so did not mean to spin it around that much. So a flight from Madison out to LAX. Anyway, flight to the LA airport. And from the LA airport, flight to Sydney, Australia. Or actually, no, the flight there was to Melbourne. So Melbourne is where we stayed. I was there for a work trip. I needed to help uh, facilitate training in the Royal Children's Hospital. So I stayed in Melbourne. Uh, my work didn't take me very long. I was mostly there in case of things broke. So I needed to make sure that I was there, physically present. And yeah, it's the first time I had really visited a major city like this. I'd never been for a work trip and have never been sense for a work trip like this, where I'm actually doing work and not going to a convention or a conference or anything like that. I had a blast. 
Um, this is where I found out that I actually don't get jet lag going west. So the trip from LAX, trip from LAX, damn it, Google. Okay. Um, we left at about like 10, 30, 11 p.m. I say we, I was the only one on the flight for myself or for my work group. Um, everybody else had different flights. So left about that point, I had a seat open next to me, which was very nice uh, because the person also sitting in my section was petrified of flying and she wanted to make sure that if she flailed around panicking that she wouldn't affect anyone. And I didn't have problems with that. I was able to help her calm down a bit since I'm, well, I've mentioned how much I've flown already at this point. But it was nice to have that seat open between us because that means that I don't have to worry about kind of scrunching in and making sure that I don't elbow somebody by accident. It's a little bit more comfortable for me to sleep, which I did. It was a very long flight. Um, I slept the entire flight. I fell asleep after we were served food from LAX. It was probably close to about midnight Pacific time. When I woke up, we were flying, uh, we had just started flying over Australia. I just slept the entire trip and it was glorious. I mean, I can't say that I was quality sleep, but it meant that I wasn't dead tired when I arrived in Melbourne so I can actually do touring. I went to bed slightly early, but by slightly early, I mean like 8 p.m. local time. That's fine in my mind for international travel. Flights back, it was Melbourne to Sydney. Um... Sydney out to Houston, Texas, or Dallas, Texas, sorry, not Houston, Texas. Um, I'm not a fan of DFW as an airport, but that flight there was perfectly fine because the, um, much more hot. Um, so I forgot to mention this part. The reason why I was sitting next to the person who had the extra seat open next to them is because I was wearing a cat shirt. And the person at the counter saw my cat and shirt went, oh, that is an awesome shirt. Uh, I don't remember which one I was wearing at the time. I think I might have been wearing the world nomination one. That's an awesome shirt. I, oh, by the way, I think we have a better seat for you. That happened every step of that trip. Even the flight from Madison out to LAX, that type of thing still happened. This is the reason why I tend to wear cat shirts or cute shirts in general on my flights is because... I get things for them. It helps that I'm generally nice to people and so on. But yeah, I get... I've been upgraded on flights. I have been... Made sure that there's nobody sitting next to me. And yeah, it's rather nice. So yeah, um, that was one work trip. Um, other work trips include flights down to Orlando. Um, the Orange County Convention Center is a common location for my Citrix convention that I tend to go to. Um... That includes one trip in particular where I asked my company to fly me home, so back to West Palm Beach. I stayed there for a weekend ahead of time, and then I took what I thought was a bus up to Orlando. Turned out to be a van, and I made the trip in two hours. Now, let me point something out for a moment. So this would have been, um, departure would have been from here. From here, to, um, we'll go with, just give me caps lock. I have a cat on my lap, that's the reason why I'm not doing anything else. From there to there. Via car, Google claims that it's two and a half hours. We made it in slightly under two Slightly under two hours, 176 miles. That would be, um, brain is not wanting to work, 88 miles an hour average. Average. They were basically just slammed on the gas the entire time. I have never made it up there that fast. So, yeah, that was an interesting experience. Um, I'm actually going to be going to that same convention in Atlanta this year. That's going to be happening in a month. Um, one time the convention was actually in the, 
Los Angeles, or the Anaheim Convention Center, uh, same place that VidCon is, for reference. In fact, this would have been very shortly before, yeah, it was very shortly before VidCon. It was the convention that was there right before, if I remember right. So I've been to L.A. once. Um, while I was in L.A., went to Disneyland, because I've been to Disney World before, but I had never been to Disneyland. Disneyland is really tiny. I'm just not used to that. Uh, let's see, other travel. So this past year, I decided, oh, screw it. I'm tired of dealing with things. I want to go leave Madison for a bit. So I was planning on going to Norway like I frequently do. I've been to Norway what, seven or eight times now. Um, but the flights were ludicrously expensive. And I was only going to be there for a couple of weeks. I didn't really want to pay for a bunch of hotels in Norway because hotels in Norway are stupid expensive. So I decided to compromise, and my partner and I went to Iceland. Specifically, we stayed in Reykjavik almost the entire time. Uh, we only left the city for one day. Or, not counting the airport area. The airport's really far away in Keflavik. I mean, it's not that far, but comparatively, it's nowhere near walking distance. Anyway, um... We stayed in downtown Reykjavik. I can point out where pretty easily. Actually, it's right here. <laughs> Isn't it? Uh, nope, that's the Icelandic Phallological Museum, which means it's over here. Yep, here it is. Apartment K. So we stayed here. I don't recommend going to this place. It's too noisy. Um, I mean, it's not horrible or anything, it's just the noise levels, and it's not their fault. The noise is because this is the main drag for tourism. So, lots and lots and lots of noise, and the way that the apartments are set up, there is no airflow. Which means that if you want fresh air, you have to deal with noise. That You can't get around it. So, that part was really annoying, but... Um, ended up doing lots of walking in this general vicinity, and yes, I did visit the Icelandic Phallological Museum. And we also went on a tour that took us from here, uh, around here, along this 47 route, basically. And we actually went to Hot Springs. Hot Springs were kind of nice. Can't say I would necessarily go again, but it, I was very happy to go on that tour to begin with. I'm thinking that's really about it for my travels to date. So country-wise, I have been to Norway, Sweden, briefly Denmark, uh, and Austria. If you're counting layovers, you can include Germany, United Kingdom, and the Netherlands. Uh, yeah, that would be about it for Europe. I will be going to Ireland. That will be a direct flight to Ireland. I need to buy those tickets. Um, Canada, the United States, and Australia. And that would be it for foreign countries that I've visited. Uh, States-wise, I have been through almost every state east of the Mississippi, with the exception of West Virginia, which I will be going to in a month. So I should mention, I'm going to be traveling a bunch toward the end of May. So I've got the convention in Atlanta. I'm going to try to convince my company to, instead of flying me back to Madison, fly me to my destination, which is in Pittsburgh, right here. And then I have a friend, my friend who used to live in Minneapolis, now work, uh, lives in, works in Morgantown. And we're going to be going down to the National Forest over here. We've got Airbnb set up in Davis. Is it Davis? It was somebody's name. I think it's Davis. Anyway. Uh, we've got an Airbnb set up over here where we'll be spending a few days. That'll be nice. Then I'll be heading back to Madison, working for one day, then I'm on sabbatical. And this sabbatical, the one to Ireland, is a four-week sabbatical. So I'm going to be doing that for a while. So yeah, um, travel-wise, I have not been to the state of West Virginia until next month. And I've never been to Tennessee Everything else east of the Mississippi I have visited at least once in my life. Either trips up and down for going up to New Hampshire or 
various short little road trips that I've been with friends. Or the trip from Florida out to New Orleans, since that meant that I went through Alabama and Mississippi. Um, for places west of the Mississippi, though, it's very little. So I have been to Minneapolis. So I've been to Minnesota. I have been to Louisiana. Texas I've only been to via layover, so I don't really count that. So California is the only other state that I've been to west of the Mississippi. I would love to visit some of these areas, but not driving, it kind of means I don't get a chance. I really want to visit Vancouver at least once, because I've been told it's a very nice area. Especially Vancouver and Seattle area. But I get the feeling I'm not going to be doing that anytime soon. So yeah, that's about it. Um, hope you've enjoyed my a little view as to where I've seen things and been. Um, yeah, I didn't have a huge amount of time for recording a video tonight, hence the reason why I'm doing this one. Tomorrow, we'll see how much time I have. I might have the first of the series videos tomorrow. We'll see. Good night, Internet. I'll see you tomorrow.